Hello everyone. In this video we're going to be solving a real simple differential equation. And I'll be presenting three methods. Now for this kind of problem, three methods might sound like an overkill, but the idea is to demonstrate different approaches to differential equations. And this is a really nice one. I believe these equations are called homogeneous, not homogeneous. Anyways, so here's the first method. For my first method, I'm going to use substitution, and this is basically typical for these kinds of equations. We've done similar equations before where you can kind of write, you know, y prime as a function of x over y or y over x. In this case, it is a function of x over y. If you can do this, and then my first method can always be applied. And it is uh, basically changing a different variable uh, to a different variable. I'm, I'm just going to... Uh, set y equals ux. And from here, I can differentiate both sides, obviously, to find out what happens with the y prime and the u prime. So y prime is going to be, now u is a function of x, because y is a function of x, right? So if you differentiate this by using the product rule, the derivative of the first function times the second plus the derivative of x, which is 1, times the first function, which is u, and then if you simplify this a little bit, you can write it as y prime equals u prime x plus u. So that, that's going to be the y prime. And then let's go ahead and substitute this into our equation. Now on the left hand side, we have y prime. And I'm going to replace it with u prime x plus u. And on the right hand side, I have y over x, but there is a reason why I replaced y with u x. So I'm going to go ahead and replace y with ux and divide it by x. That's going to give you u. Yes, that is u. Okay, from here, something interesting happens after canceling out the y. Of course, x and y, you don't want them to be 0, so on and so forth. If y is 0, then y prime is 0. Obviously, there's a solution to that equation as well. In this case, y is going to be a constant, right? That's fairly simple. Okay, great. Suppose y is not a constant. Okay, and... Um, and we're going to be looking for non-constant solutions. Okay, great. So now, um, after canceling out the x's, we also notice that the, you, we can also cancel out the u's, right? And we end up with something like real simple, u prime x equals 0. Well, what is that supposed to mean? The product of two things equals 0 means they, are, they can both be equal to 0. But we don't care about the values of x. Obviously, x cannot equal 0 because that's going to make it undefined. So if x is not 0, that means u prime has to be 0. Wow, that's interesting. What does that mean? Well, if something differentiated or the derivative of something is 0, that implies that thing is a constant, right? Because the um, rate of change is just 0. It doesn't change. Okay, u equals c, and c is basically is a constant. Okay, great. So we've, we found the value of u, but we're looking for y, remember, and y is equal to ux, therefore y becomes ux, which is cx, because u is equal to c. So this gives you basically all the solutions where uh, c is a constant, c times x is a solution. But notice that if c is equal to 0, then y equals 0 is also a specific solution, which we already talked about. Okay, great. So that is the first method. Let's go ahead and talk about the second method. My second method involves something very different. That's why it's called second method, right? Okay. Now, with the second method, I'm going to first cross multiply. Again, I don't want x to be 0. Maybe I don't want y to be 0 either. But anyways, let's go ahead and cross multiply. And this gives us y equals y prime times x. Nice. Now, since I have an equation in y prime, I'm going to differentiate both sides of this equation. And y is differentiable, blah, 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 so on and so forth. You know, if you need those conditions, but let's differentiate both sides. And this time, um, when we differentiate y, you're going to get y prime. But y prime, if you differentiate y prime, you're going to get y double prime, the second derivative. And um, we're going to use product rule again. So the derivative of the first function times the second plus the derivative of x, which is 1, times the first function, which is y prime. Great. 
So from here, what am I getting? Well, I have y prime on both sides, and notice that I can just cross it out, right? So y prime cancels out, leaving us with something super simple again, y double prime x equals zero, which means, again, x cannot be zero, so y double prime has to be zero. But what is that supposed to mean? Well, if you integrate this once, you get y prime. So if y double prime is zero, that means y prime is a constant. But what is that supposed to mean? If you integrate one more time, you're going to get y equals cx plus t. So you're kind of thinking, the derivative of which function is c, the answer is cx, but there's also a constant that you can always add. Uh, and now, I'm going to substitute this, right? Because we do not know the value of c or d, and I want to know, uh, you know more about these constants if I can. So I'm going to substitute this into the original equation. What's the original equation? It's this one. y prime is equal to y over x. Let's go ahead and substitute everything. y prime obviously is going to be c in this case. So c equals y, which is cx plus d, right, divided by x. But is that possible if you divide cx by d, cx plus d by x, do you get c? Yes, but only if cx is equal to cx plus d, that means d is equal to zero. Wow, that's interesting. So there is a d, but it's there, but it's not there. So that means y is equal to cx plus zero, which is y equals cx. And again, this obviously matches with the first method because we're solving the same problem. Remember, we got the same answer uh, by using our first method, which is y equals c times x. Okay, great. Let's go ahead and take a look at the third method. And after third method, maybe we can just go ahead and check our work. Okay, great. Now, we have the equation y prime is equal to y over x. And what I'd like to do is, this is a separable differential equation. You see, it's so simple that it allows you to solve this in many different ways. So, I'm going to replace y prime with dy over dx. And then dy over dx is equal to y over x. Hmm, that's interesting. I want to make this a separable equation, so kind of separate the variables. Put the y with the dy and the put the dx with dx. So we're going to get something like dy over y equals dx over x. And for the sake of simplicity, can I just safely, can I assume that x and y are both positive? And if they're not positive, like let's say uh, they're negative, then you can kind of, you know, look at the different variations of the solution, but just for the sake of simplicity, I'm going to assume that x and y are positive. Something that I forgot to mention at the very beginning because I wanted to restrict the solutions to positive real numbers. Anyways, so x and y are positive, and now I have this separable or already separated differential equation, and now I can integrate both sides, and when I do, I'm going to be getting the logarithm, the natural logarithm, or some people call it Napier's logarithm. Okay, that's what the N stands for, whatever. So this is going to be ln y equals ln x plus the constant c. Okay, looking at c doesn't really matter. Now, I can basically do e to the power of both sides. So it's going to be like e to the power ln y is equal to e to the power ln x plus c which can then be written as e to the power ln x times e to the power c. Now, e to the power c can basically be written as a constant, and we can use k for that. And now, e to the power ln something is that thing. So, e to the power ln y is just going to be y. This is going to be x, and this is going to be our k. So, let's go ahead and write the constant first. So, we're going to get y equals kx from here, which is not very different from the other solutions because y equals cx, y equals kx, doesn't matter because k is a constant, right? Why is it a constant? Because c is a constant, e to the power c is a constant, therefore k is a constant as well. And this brings us to the end of the third method, but not to the end of the video yet because we're going to talk about checking our work. Okay, great. So. Our original problem was y prime equals y over x, and we just got y equals, well, I, I guess I could use the last one, y equals kx. Is that actually true? Let's go ahead and check it out. What is y prime if y is equal to kx? The derivative of kx is just k, and y is equal to kx, so y prime is k, y is kx divided by x, 
X cancels out and you get K. K equals K. Everybody is happy. Yay, everything is awesome. And this brings us to the end of this video. Well, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you tomorrow with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.